Hello, Salaja here. In this video, I'll be showing how to make a Redstone computer identify and perform a branch instruction automatically. This is a similar setup to what I had in my last video, except the clock is on this side and the branch enable is on this side. These are the lines that control which instruction is being read. As in the last one, off or dark is the one that's selected. By turning on, t on the clock you can see that the line that's being read is moving uh, across. And these four lines here control which address you're going to jump to. If I wish to jump to line number 2, I set the address to location 2 and I toggle the jump enable line and you see we've now jumped to address 2. Remember address 0, 1, 2. I'll reset it to location 0, address 0. There we are, address 0. Now, the way I've set this up is that instructions can be put on with torches, so just some simple ones there. Now if I reset, turn the clock back on, you can see that it's reading out the lines one at a time. So a torch is equal to a 1 and no torch is equal to a 0. Now the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how this, how I can set up a system that will identify an instruction that's telling it to basically go and read a different instruction. The way I'm going to do that, these four lines here are going to be the address it's going to jump to and these two are going to act as an opcode. Now the opcode I'm going to use is both high and it will jump to whatever location it is is specified here. But first I've got to connect the wires up so these wires are all going to be fed into these wires here so it knows which location to jump to. I'm going to do that now. So now you can see that I've connected the four address bits of the instruction to the four inputs of the decoder. Now this won't do anything it can send any values it wants into here and nothing will ever happen unless this turns off and back on again. So what I need to do now is connect it such that when the desired opcode which I said before as both of these are being on uh, it will cause this to turn off. So I'm going to do that now. All right. So you can see here, I've put two torches on here and I've taken a line across here. So when both of these are high, like so, this line goes dark. If only one is on, it'll still be high. So only when both are on, this line will be selected. Now from there, I'm going to feed that into the jump enable bit. Now, if I let it run, let's say I tell it to jump to line 1. So this means when I activate the clock, it should count along to here, then it should jump back to here, and then count and jump.
Now it's doing as it's meant to do, but you'll notice it doesn't spend very long here and it doesn't spend very long here. That's because when it uh, jumps, it jumps immediately and then there's not much time before the next clock cycle comes around and it just skips over to this one. These are just some of the many timing issues you run into when building a, a computer. The way I'm going to overcome this, this uh, timing issue, first of all I'm going to put a torch here. Now what this is going to do, remember in my last video when I said whenever the clock signal, which is this one here, is off, you cannot have the jump enable off as well. So it need, they can't both be off at the same time. What this does is whenever this line is off, it'll so this redstone line will be off, it'll turn on this torch which will force this on. So it basically prevents it from having uh, error ring out, you could say. So with that done, I activate the, activate the clock again. And you'll notice it's spending more time there, but it's still jumping across and having that issue, where it's uh, not staying here for long. So an another thing I've done to help with that is um, I've created this little circuit here. This basically makes it that every time it performs a jump command, it's going to skip a clock cycle. So it's going to wait one extra clock cycle. Now what this is, this is just a little flip-flop here. And whenever it's set with this side being red, it forces the clock high. And what's going to happen is that this clock's going to go uh, dark, but this is going to be, be red and take over. So it's going to overwrite the low point of the clock signal so it just doesn't happen, basically making it skip a clock cycle. However, when it comes back on, it's going to, this is a little um, edge triggered metastable thing, so only on a rising edge of the clock, it's going to send a pulse across here and reset this little JK flip flop I think it's called, so it uh, makes this line dark. So it'll make this one red, this one will go dark, and the clock will re resume sending its signal to all the uh, parts. Likewise, whenever there is a jump, this line will go dark, come up here, and it will set the flip-flop so that it has sends a red signal through. Um, I'm going to turn it on now. So there you can see it waits much longer at the address it's jumping to. Now you really need to do this because otherwise if it doesn't spend enough time on the instruction you, you jump to, uh, some of the signals they may not it may not persist long enough on this instruction for an instruction to be carried out and your computer may have errors. So I'll just hold over it so you can see the way it works. Alright. And keep in mind what I've done here, this will work for any instruction really. Let's put in a bunch of instructions that won't do anything. Um, and then up here let's branch to line 3 this time. So you can see this is this is these two lines here these two lines are the opcode. So only when both there's a torch on both of these is it going to branch. This is the first line where that happens, so it's going to branch 
on this instruction and it's these uh, other four lines are the address it's going to branch to and in this case it's address 3 so that's going to be 1, 2, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 so it's this line here so it'll go along to here then back and keep cycling there uh, and all these other torches there are other instructions that haven't been installed yet and they shouldn't do anything they should not make it branch and it should skip them and hopefully it'll branch well and now it's going night jump yep and that's the basics of branching do a few more let's make it branch at one of these back ones and let's make it branch right back to the beginning address 0 now I switch the clock back on branch and it's back to the first one and you can see different lines are being highlighted these are in other instructions that can be performed then when it gets to the uh, jump instruction both go high cancels that and allows it to jump and that's the basic principle of how uh, the computer I built in Minecraft is able to j perform a jump operation between instructions Thanks for watching.